This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Brilliance Audio presents The Pied Piper by Harold Schechter Performed by Stephen Weber The 1950s have been recast in the popular imagination as a bland, balmy era of simplicity and innocence, of sock hops and going steady, and after-school milkshakes at Pop's Sweet Shop. Like all nostalgic myths about the long-vanished good old days, however, this one is a heavily manipulated picture of reality, omitting the fears and anxieties that kept Americans awake at night. Along with nuclear fallout and the purported communist infiltration of our schools, government, and entertainment industry, the specter that haunted the decade was the juvenile delinquent, the antisocial teen with his black leather jacket, ducktail haircut, and perpetual Elvis Presley sneer. Adult America's worst nightmares about its out-of-control youth seemed shockingly realized in January 1958 when Charles Little Red Starkweather a psychopathic punk who thought of himself as a James Dean-like rebel, went on a murder spree with his underage girlfriend, killing eleven people in Nebraska and Wyoming. A decade later, when America's youth culture had morphed into the turn-on, tune-in, drop-out ethos of late 1960s hippiedom, the older generation's fears about sex and drug-crazed long hairs became a flesh-and-blood reality in the person of Charles Manson, evil messiah, to a pack of wild-eyed minions who killed at his bidding. Two men named Charles, then Starkweather and Manson, represented the darkest potentialities, the shadow aids of their respective generations. But there was a third American psycho killer named Charles, a kind of transitional figure who bridged the criminal gap between his more infamous namesakes. While adopting the same 1950s rebel-without-a-cause style as Starkweather, he exerted a Manson-like hold on a band of slavish teen followers. His name was Charles Schmid, known in the annals of late 20th century American murder as the Pied Piper of Tucson. Born in 1942 to an unwed mother who deposited him at a Tucson nursing home, Smitty, as he came to be known by his cultish admirers, was adopted by the home's proprietors, Charles and Catherine Schmid. While some criminologists have taken note of the surprisingly high percentage of serial killers who grew up in adoptive households, among them David, son of Sam Berkowitz, there is nothing to indicate that being raised by non-biological parents had anything to do with Schmid's sociopathy. True, he would later tell friends that Charles Schmid Sr. regularly whipped him for no apparent reason, I hate him and he hates me and Catherine Schmid appears to have been unusually permissive, indulging her little boy's every whim and allowing him an unusual degree of freedom. Still, millions of children have suffered infinitely more troubled upbringings without growing up to be psycho killers. By all accounts, Schmid's early school years were unremarkable, no different from those of any other Tucson youngster of his time, in the words of one biographer. His teachers would remember him as a bright, well-mannered, if underachieving boy, who never got into any actual trouble. It wasn't until high school that he distinguished himself not as a scholar, for all his evident intelligence, he rarely earned grades higher than C's, but as an athlete. With his powerful upper body and exceptionally short stature, he never grew taller than five foot three. Schmid made a superb gymnast and, in his proudest moment, led his team to a state championship in 1960 with his first-place performance on the flying rings. It was in high school that Schmid also got into his first actual trouble. Requiring welding tools for a hot rod he was building, he took some from his shop class and got suspended in his senior year. Rather than return the tools, apologize, and get reinstated, he quit school for good, never to graduate. 